Okay, let's talk about math for session two. Now these kids coming into the sixth to eighth grades at this point did experience COVID and uh, lost perhaps a year or two years of math education. Some of them have been able to keep up and to catch up, but uh, a third of the students across the country are still floundering in math because of the math that they missed or lost um, during their COVID experience. So what we do is we test students that are coming into session two. They are uh, 11 to 13 years old, perhaps 10 to 15 years old, depending upon their abilities and so forth and their maturity. We will test them to find out, as I have said in other videos, where their potholes are. You know yourself, you're driving down a street and there are a lot of potholes. You might blow a tire, but it certainly is not a comfortable situation. And it's the same with kids when they don't know what they're supposed to know at a particular level. So we test and we find out, do they know their measurements? Do they know their facts? Do they know the processes? Do they know the properties and so forth that they should know? at this point in their education. And when we find out what they know and they don't know, then we fill in those potholes so they can have a smooth ride. Now math is a very individualized subject and it is individualized. You might find that for a bit, two or three students may be at the same point, but then they're going to diverge again because one will not quite grasp it as quickly as another. And so, uh, it, uh, it can be a very interesting situation if you try to teach math to everyone at once and the same thing. You're going to leave some people in the dust and others uh, are going to be frustrated because they can't move fast enough. So uh, math is a very individualized subject. Now what do we do with mathematics? Well, as I said, we test. And then um, normally it just depends. If a child is, is missing his facts and he needs a lot of practice, we may put him in one or the other of, of, of these. Well, that's not the one I want. Uh, one or the other of these books, which this is for addition and subtraction. There's also one for um, multiplication and division. There's some for fractions, decimals, and percents. Whatever we need, whatever the student needs, that's what we will do with him. Uh, normally, we will start a child in here, uh, and this is a good, good review. It's Mastering Essential Math Skills, Book 1 for grades 4 and 5. And I realize he's in 6 to 8. What are we doing in 4 to 5? Well, listen to this. Uh, plus the fact that we add measurement, we add estimation um, and rounding, we add... Uh, a lot of things, financial literacy, consumer math, business math, into the courses. Uh, this particular course covers whole numbers, fractions, decimals, ratios, proportions, percents, geometry, number theory and algebra, integers, charts and graphs, probability and statistics, and word problems. So obviously it's going to be at a fourth or fifth grade level, but we want to make sure that our students know and can pass that particular book. Then. Um, if that's the case, they can go through as fast as they can. I've had some students that uh, uh, complete it within a couple of months. Okay, then we go into the pre-algebra concepts, Mastering Math Essentials. Again, and this, these books are by Richard W. Fisher. He's one of the top math teachers in the country. He has provided video lessons. So if uh, our explanation doesn't work or the child is can't get a hold of us or something, he's got a backup there. He can go in and listen to Mr. Fisher's uh, explanation and watch him work the problems. And so he has a backup and he's getting it from two sources instead of just one, which is a good idea. Okay, then once they get through the pre-algebra concepts and we do include other things that are what in that book, particular book, we go into no-nonsense algebra. And uh, there is another book and what people have found out, what the mathematicians have found out when they have one book in algebra and it, it, it goes quite quickly through the things, they need a second book. And so there is a second book, which is a practice book with this. And we encourage uh, students and parents to get that practice book. Now, if the child happens to go beyond that, that's fine. And he can, he can go into algebra two or geometry, but we want him to at least get through algebra uh, by the end of the eighth grade. 
so that is our math program.